I wanted to share a feature that's coming up in Xlight's release 2018.9, which will be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, Xlight's is a, a free show sequencer and player, primarily used in the in the Christmas light community, um, Halloween, and increasingly in the broader lighting communities because it is open source um, and extremely powerful and capable of driving uh, uh, well over a million channels um, and and keep your shows running so it's uh and it's developing fast uh we're up to our eighth release already this year we released 46 releases last year so it, it innovates very quickly um one of the the things that uh folks who are using other um, show players, particularly things like Madrix, have um, been looking for is a way to play their shows on a device which doesn't involve leaving their Madrix key exposed, particularly if they have to uh, leave things unattended for periods of time. Um, and uh, the Falcon Pi player, which has been available for quite a number of years now, is a great solution for uh, playing a uh, ACN or SACN or uh, Artnet or, or even just old school DMX uh, from a very cheap $35 um, standalone computer. Uh, you install the Falcon Pi Player image on it and it will uh, play your show quite happily. Um, it's got a, a, an advanced scheduler, it's got event handling, it's got a whole bunch of features. Um, but one of the challenges with the Falcon Pi player is it does require its data in this FSCQ file format, which is not a format that's extensively supported. Um, one of the things that does support it is, uh, is Xlights, and uh, Vixen's also uh, capable of outputting uh, the FSCQ file format, which is all well and good, except if you're using something like Madrix or Gladiator or Jinx or some other ArtNet or SACN capable uh, uh, show uh, controller. So what I want to do is share with you uh, this unit utility, which is our capture utility. Uh, here I've got Gladiator. It's configured with a 16 by 32 matrix. Um, I've set it up with uh, ArtNet output. Um, basically, it's going to output eight universes of 192 channels. I'll turn it on. So it's generating the data. And over here you have the capture utility. It's currently set up to capture ArtNet. It's going to capture all universes. You can constrain it if you want to. Um, there's also some triggering functionality up here where you can use data inside um, what's being broadcast to, to control when it turns on and off, but we're just going to turn it on and off manually. So to do a capture, you click on the start button and down here you can see that it's accumulating. Now the way in which Gladiator has been set up, it's actually sending the packets to the IP address of my machine. Um, I don't use the loopback adapter mainly because uh, we don't seem to be able to pick those packets up, but it's just as easy to send the packets back here. In theory, this would work on multicast as well, but again, I'm not entirely sure that was, was working properly, at least when the, uh, the multicast was sent from the same computer as you're trying to receive it from. But it's not hard to set up. So now it's been running for a little while. I'll click stop. And it analyzes it and it tells me that, you know, it found eight universes. Uh, there were 6,936 packets received. They appear to have a, a frame interval of 40 milliseconds, which is about right for Gladiator. And that translates into 867 frames per universe. Uh, you want more details, you can click on the analyze button and it will come up and it will tell you. Uh, we ran that for 34 seconds by the looks of it. Um, all the universes look the same size, etc., which is not guaranteed when you just click the start button. It would be quite easy to miss or get halfway through the data. So that all looks good. And then if I want to save it as an FSCQ file, I just click the save button. Uh, by default, it's saving it as an FSCQ. I can call it my Gladiator FSCQ file and I'm done. It gives me the log again. Um, this data here is actually quite important because this tells you the structure of the FSCQ file. So basically they're stored in the, in the FSCQ file in universe order. So the first 192 bytes will be channel, uh, sorry, will be universe one and universe two will be the second 192 bytes and so on. And so when you come over to the Falcon Pi player, you would have to come into here, set up your channel outputs 
and I would have to say here, oh, look, universe one is 192 and so forth. And I can set it at this point to be multicast and so forth. Um, and then when you click play, you upload the FSCQ file, you click play, it would then send this data out to those devices. Um, this is a slightly old version, very old version of Falcon Pi Play. They're currently up to 1.10. So um, I believe they've got ArtNet support now, although I wouldn't swear to it. I'm pretty sure they do. All right. So yeah, it's just a, a cool way to uh, capture your uh, SACN or your ArtNet data put it into a file and then you can use um, uh, the Falcon Pi player if you want to put it on a, on a cheap computer. If you still want to run it on a computer, there is actually a scheduler that comes with um, uh, x -Lights. Um, This is extremely full featured. Um, it, it does require you to describe um, how you want the data sent out in x -Lights. So you'll need to get a little bit more involved in x -Lights. But this thing's got extensive um, event handling. It's got uh, OSC support. Um, it'll do timecode support. So you can uh, you can sync up using ArtNet timecode. It'll also, it has a, a way of also doing timecode over OSC and the like. And it also syncs up with the FPP. So quite an advanced show player. Also capable of driving video output and synchronizing that. Um, and also sending out, uh, it's, it's got a massive number of things that it can do here. Um, in terms of you know sending data out to uh, websites and you know even screen mapping out to um, uh, out, out to a prop or something so yeah a huge number of things that you can do with a show player in X lights as well and again you can use that FSCQ data because you've just created it um, using uh, this here. Uh, so you don't actually have to use x lights to do the sequencing. You can capture the data and then just use x lights as the player to play the data out. So yeah, thought maybe that might be of interesting interest to the, uh, the broader DMX community. Thanks.